let us notice uh, the book of 2 Corinthians and let us notice 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and let us call your attention this morning to uh, the 15th verse of scripture. We was here on last Sunday. The Bible says, and he died for all. Talking about the Lord Jesus, Paul records a rights to the church at Corinth reminding the saints of God, the brethren, the church, that he or Jesus died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Notice again, Paul said, and he died for all, that those who live should live, watch this, here's a drastic change. People go from living for themselves, recognizing and receiving Christ as Redeemer. They go from living for themselves to living for him. For he died for all that those who live should live Again, here's the drastic change, no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and arose again. But watch this, if we are no longer living for ourselves, but if we are in truth living for Christ, then verse 17 has something to say to us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is living for Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Watch this or better. See, it is better to live for Christ than to live for oneself. And so based upon that, our subject again is personal. No longer living for myself. No longer living for myself. If you don't mind, tell the subject to one person. Tell them the subject this morning. No longer living for myself. And let's give God a praise for our subject on this morning. No longer living for myself. And again, we talked about how when people live for themselves, as many of us have did, then a person is again operating in selfishness whenever people are living for themselves again they are living a selfish life they are putting their needs their wants their desires before what god would have for them to do and many of us who have changed and have gone from living for ourselves to living for God, we can truly testify that living for Christ is to live one's best life. Amen. See, I pause just to see how many people were going to agree. I'm living a better life living for Christ. Is that your testimony? Are, are you a new creation? Have things, have all things passed away and have all things become new? Do you have a new, a better way of thinking? Do you have a new, a better way of talking? Do you have a new, a better way of choosing? If it is the truth, you shouldn't mind giving him a praise because again, you are living your best life. Many of us have gone from being broke, busted, and disgusted from living above and not beneath. 
Oh, many of us have experienced watch this deliverance time and time and time and time and time again. Oh, is that your testimony? He changed your life for the better. That's my testimony. I would not be where I am today had it not been for his help. Had it not been for his mercy. Am I right about that? And I know many of your testimony. No way you would be where you are today without his mercy. Come on. I wonder do you ever have flashbacks? I wonder do you ever think about where you would be if you were still living for yourself. Oh, I'll tell you what some of us would be. In prison. Come on. In hospitals. In the grave. Come on. There's, don't make me go there. Some of us know our life would be jacked up from the floor up. But that's not the case. Am I right about it? But a change took place. We made a decision to go from living for ourselves to living for Christ. Notice what Jesus says again in Matthew 16. Notice the word in carefully in Matthew the 16th chapter. And, and y'all, and I tell folk in reference to getting saved after you turn to Matthew 16 and 24, I tell people now, if I would have known in my sinning days what I know now, well, I would have converted years before I did. I, I, I would have got off of certain paths. I would have gotten off of certain roads that I was on. Well, watch this. And I wouldn't made things so difficult. Wouldn't have brought so much pain in my life. Because like it or not, when you live for yourself, you create a whole lot of unnecessary problems. Unnecessary heartaches. Am I right about it? Because y'all know how I teach. We are our own worst enemy. Nobody has messed me up more than me. Nobody has messed you up more than you. And so in one sense, when we stop living for ourselves, we stop messing ourselves up. We allow God to do in us and through us what he desires to do. And there are things when you start living for God that you did not understand nor recognize that you could do, that you could accomplish. Am I right about that? There are certain things that we have we would not possess today because we didn't know we could have them. Ooh, I said we didn't know we could have them. But when we started living for him, he began to reveal the things that he had for us. Things that he wanted us to do. Never make a mistake about it or never get it twisted. Whenever you go from living for yourself and you start living for God or for Christ, your plans will change. Right? Your plans change. Many of us, what we plan to do with our life when we got saved, plans change. Come on. And they change for the better. Now, some plans change, and we thought like, oh, wait a minute, God. But as we continue being submissive, how many recognize there were some plans that changed in your life that they change for the better? Woo. I, I, I don't really want to go there, but, but some of us, if, if you would have married, Matthew 16. So, so in, in essence, there are some things that we are so happy that these plans change. Many of us have learned to be happy because we didn't get our way. Lord, thank you for not giving me what I asked you for because you knew it wasn't good you knew it wasn't what you had from me even though i was begging you for it. you knew see god know you better than you know yourself that
That's the reason you don't just praise him when he says yes. You got to learn to praise him when he tells you no. Whoa. Some folk can only dance when God says yes. But that's an immature state. When you become mature, you praise him even when he gives you, watch this, a big fat no. Matthew 16. Notice the scripture carefully. Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, to his learners, to his followers, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. That's the part that people don't recognize. That if you're going to live for Christ, you have to deny self. One definition of denying self is saying no to self. Another definition of denying self is to discipline self. How many, how many know self needs to be disciplined? Self needs to be restrained. Woo! Held down, held under check. First thing he mentions, if you're coming after me, you're going to be a learner. If you're going to be a follower, deny yourself. Listen, not for Sunday morning only, but it becomes a lifestyle of self-denial. Not always doing what I want to do. Woo! Again, there are times that we must learn to do because it's right to do and deny what self wants to do. I can't tell y'all as a shepherd how many times I have been in a certain place, not because it was my plans to be there, but that's where he wanted me to be. Self-denial is a part of the journey. And the more God uses you, the more God anoints you for service, then the more you learn to deny yourself. Am I right about that? And you have to teach it to family that there are certain times that I'm, I'm going to deny myself in order to please him. Y'all know that's right, ain't it? Notice what he said. Deny yourself. Take up his cross, suffering pain, and follow me. This is what I want us to see this morning. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man, y'all better listen, if he or she gains the whole world and loses his own soul? See, a lot of people won't live for Christ because they're too busy trying to gain the world. This is true for the church now. A lot of church folk want to be like worldly folk. But Jesus is letting his disciples know what does it profit a man to gain, notice the word and carefully, the whole world. See, you can't have it both ways. You can't gain the world and gain Christ. Watch this. Somebody's going to be left on the outside. And no matter how many times false preachers tell the lie that you can straddle the fence, there is no fence to straddle. Either you saved or you unsaved. Either you holy or you unholy. You either godly or ungodly. Whoa, can I break it down? Either you living for God or you living for yourself. Notice that there is something that a man... Man being human, human being a limited being, can think that it's gain. You better listen to me. But it's actually a big loss. Notice what Jesus, this is Jesus' words. He said, for what profit? 
I'm back in verse 26. Is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? See, people don't recognize when they're living for themselves and refuse to live for God, you're going to lose your soul. This deals with a person upon death entering into eternal damnation. Why? Because in their life physically, alive here on earth, he or she never made the choice to live for God. And you can't force it upon anybody. Come on, somebody. I said you can't force it upon anybody. No matter how much you love your loved ones, you can't force them to live for God. Even though you know it's better for them. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, parents. You can't force your child to live for God. The only thing the scripture commands of us is that we show them, you better listen, the way. Don't show them a way. Show them the way. Let your child know there's only one way to God. There's only one way to heaven. There are not several ways to heaven. Oh, y'all ought, ought to loosen up some. Come on now. There are many ways to Atlanta. Come on, somebody. And you know, folk love to say stuff like that. Well, you know, we all going our different ways, but we're going to end up in the same destination. The devil is a liar. Jesus is making this plain to people. And see, there are preachers that won't give folk the truth. But see, I'm called to minister the truth. Listen, Paul told the church, he said, have I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? See, you can tell some people the truth and they'll hate you for what you told them. They'll hate you for straightening them. But see, I would rather a person hate me for telling them the truth than loving me for lying to you. Whoa, come on here, somebody. Because when you grow up, you don't want nobody lying to you. I wish you shout to somebody, tell me the truth. You didn't shout it like you needed to. Look at another person, shout to him or her, tell me the truth. Whoa! What if it hurt? What if it makes you mad? What if it makes you throw something? What if it makes you roll your eyes? Why you want the truth? Because the truth makes you free. When pastor give you the truth, he's giving you something to free you. Listen, that ain't limited to pastor. When somebody else tells you the truth, receive it. Notice what he says. For what profit is it to a man? People need to think about this. If they gain the whole world. And see, so many folk want to be worldly. They want to be friends of the world. But see, the Bible says when you make yourself a friend of the world, you then indirectly make yourself an enemy of God. Woo! Imagine going to church all your life, but you're an enemy of God. You say you're a child of God, but you aren't living for God. Everybody is not a child of God. All souls belong to God. And the soul that sins shall surely die. We, if you are a child of God, you are only that because you made a choice to stop living for yourself. And to live for him. You made that choice. To line up with the written and the revealed will of God. Am I right about it, saints? Let's finish this off. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Now notice this next question. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will a man give? In exchange for his soul. 
See, you have to know the right value to put upon your soul. Come on. Because it's not just about this life only. There is an afterlife. Death is not the end, but the beginning. Woo, come on here, somebody. But see, when you get it twisted, you'll try to gain the world, not recognizing in doing so. Yes, you become a friend of the world, but you have made yourself an enemy of God. Notice the book of Philippians. Notice, no, notice the book of Philippians. Notice the book of Philippians. And, and, and let's hear Paul put it in his own words. Because I want us to understand as you turn to Philippians 3. Jesus said what profit is a man if he gains the whole world. Yet he or she loses his soul. Now notice what Paul said. Because when you stop living for yourself. That automatically means that all of us have to walk away from certain things and certain people. That's the price you pay for living for Christ. That's a price to pay. There are folk who will love you before Christ who will hate you after Christ. And see, don't get it twisted. Jesus himself told folk, you think that I come to bring peace on earth. He said, but I come to bring a sword to set a man against Come on, don't, don't you know when, when you choose to live for Christ, that sometimes brings a sword to certain relationships. That's what Jesus said. And it's nothing you have did that was wrong. It's just that you went from living for yourself to living for God. I never forget when I first got saved, having to explain to people at least notify them I don't do that no more come on y'all remember them days yeah, you had to know why it's been a change they didn't know Woo, come on y'all you remember some of you that used to drink when they when they offered you that Budweiser that that was normal but you had to tell them I don't I don't I don't drink that no more now shame on you if you said well pastor I just went ahead and drunk it with them just because I didn't I didn't want them to drink by themselves what the, what's wrong with you you have to tell me I don't do that. I had some of my friends, they tried me. Hey man, we go in the script club. You you down? I man, I don't go down no more. What? They would look at me like, man, something wrong with this boy. But see, I knew I was no longer living for myself. And it costs you. I'm looking at folks. That's really not Paul's. I'm looking at people. It costs you something to walk with God. You're going to leave things and you're going to leave people. Watch this because this is important this morning. Depending on your level of maturity, you will struggle leaving some things when you're childish. I'm in the clothes of the mess. I say you'll struggle because you're you ain't matured yet. Some of us remember when we first got saved, we wasn't as strong as we are now. We pretend we was, but you wasn't. Some of you often caught yourself cussing and some of you didn't catch yourself. Other people caught you. I remember when daddy first got saved, daddy, you, you cussed. <laughs> and he wouldn't fight, he just said, oh God, Lord have mercy. I, I did that. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> but as a person matures, whatever God requires for you to lay aside, you know you're laying aside that for something better. Come on, I got some mature saints in here. Whatever he asks you to walk away from, you know you're headed to something better so you don't mind leaving. Oh, God, I need a church to preach to. I don't mind leaving. 
touch something if I'm headed for something better. God will strip you down. Oh, come on. I said he'll strip you down. He'll break you down. Watch this. Only to build you back up. I said only to build you back up. Pastor, why he going to break me down? He has to break down the boy in you, man, so that you can be built up to be the man he wants you to be. Be seated. And no man can truly be a man. No man can truly lead a family until he knows how to deny himself, until he knows how to sacrifice a man can't lead a good woman and he's still selfish. I'm going to preach it even if y'all brothers get mad. And you shouldn't get mad at a good, strong woman for not wanting to follow a weak man. Stop hating on that woman. Stop talking about that woman. Start praising that woman. She knows the man you can be. That's the reason she wants you to let God break you down so he'll build you up. Thank you for watching the Making People Productive broadcast with Pastor Leonard D. Cochran of A Place of Refuge, Noonan. To order your copy of today's message, please call the church office at 770-252-3855 and reference the message number listed below. We want to hear from you. If you have been helped, strengthened, or encouraged by the word, let us know. Also, don't forget to connect with us on all of our major social media platforms to receive exclusive information and updates with all things Refuge Noonan. A Place of Refuge Noonan is located in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. on location and live at 1045 a.m. We also have service every Wednesday at 715 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube Live.